Okay, here's my Strike Force Heavy Artillery predictions. Takes place next Saturday, uh, May fifth, May fifteenth, in uh, Scott Trade Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, main event: Alistair Overeem versus Brett Rogers for the Strike Force Heavyweight Title. Um, I'm not going to discuss the preliminaries at all. I'm not going to say who wins because I, I know I'm going to say majority of them on um, the preliminaries. Um, but probably a lot of people who watch my videos probably don't know who they are. So um, I'm just going to discuss who you're going to see on Showtime. Um, so first one, Antoine Britt versus Rafael Caliente. Um, Cavaliente. I, I, I said his name wrong, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, when I first saw this, I, I kind of picked Antoine Britt. I was kind of going more towards Antoine Britt's side. He's aggressive. He's a, you know, he take you down, ground and pound. Um, but then I, I kind of more looked at it because when I first saw Raphael was when he got lost, when he lost to Mike Kyle. So, I mean, that kind of put it, I'm going to say a bad taste in my mouth, but that that's the last image of Raphael that was in my mind. Um, so I looked more in depth. Um, his oh, He has two losses, Raphael does. The other loss was by disqualification. So when I looked more into it, I was like, okay, Antoine Britt's a strong guy, has heavy hands, but Mike Kyle has heavy, heavy hands. Um, and I really don't see that in Antoine Britt. He's aggressive, take you down, ground and pound, boom, boom, boom. But I think Raphael, he's only had one submission in his submission win in his career. I think he's going to have a second one. Um, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, trains with Noguera. Uh, Anderson Silva, I think he's going to show off his submission skills here. I do see it going to the ground, um, but I see Ant uh, Rafael getting a submission first round over Antoine Britt. So, Rafael Caliente, first round submission over Antoine Britt. Um, next one, uh, Roger Gracie versus Kevin Randleman. Um, tough one, because, I mean, this one's a tough one to call. Truly it is, because you got Roger Gracie, who's Obviously, his jiu-jitsu is world-class. Obviously, it is. Um, you got Kevin Randleman, who who can be a dominant, as his nickname says, a monster fighter um, when he wants to. And is, he, is this fighting a Gracie? Is this going to bring it out in him? Um, I think it kind of kind of will because it is a Gracie. It's a young Gracie. Um, he kind of wants to you know, show this youngster, hey, this is what mixed martial is all about. You're fighting a veteran in me. Don't think you're going to run over me. Um, but at the same time, does Kevin Randleman have the skills to keep Gracie away? And I don't think so. Um, we all know Kevin Randleman is a great fighter. Strong as hell. But uh, he does, you know, get caught in submissions. And Gracie is a world-class jiu-jitsu. Um, so I'm going to go with Roger Gracie. Second round submission. Um, knee bar, arm bar, something bar. Um, but... I, I won't doubt if Kevin Randleman does win this. I mean, he, he probably, you know, he, he probably wants to show this young saying, you know, what it's all about. But I just think Roger Gracie's just too much, too much on the ground for a Randleman. Um, next one, Ronald Jakar Souza versus Joey Villasenor. A uh, big Villasenor fan, and and it's it, it's sad for me to see him keep fighting these these tough competition and then he loses. I mean, he'll he'll win a few, win a few, and then he fights a big time fighter, and boom, he'll lose. Um, I would love to see Via Senor go to Bellator. Uh, Bellator has a 185 division, middleweight division, and I think he'd be perfect for that. I think he would give Hector Lombard one hell of a fight. Um, I, I think, you know, if, if it comes around next season, I think he'd be a favorite in that tournament. I think, you know, Via Senor, when you fight in strike force, or he's never fought in the UFC, but if. if Hypothetically, he was in the UFC. I really don't see him in the title picture. I, I, I really see him only as a gatekeeper in the strike force. I don't even see him a gatekeeper in the UFC. I think he'd get cut. Um, so I'd love to see Via Senor go to Bellator because I think Souza is just too much um, on the ground. I, I think Via Senor is going to keep it standing. I'm going to say about a majority of the first round, but it will go to the ground um, in the second round, and I think that's where Souza is going to finish it. So. Um, even though I will give the advantage on the on the feet to Via Senor, but I just don't see Via Senor stopping Souza on the feet. Um, I, I could definitely see Via Senor winning the first round, keeping it standing. But I think in sometime in the second round, it is going to go to the ground, and Souza is going to get a submission. So, um, Ronald Jacar's Souza second round submission over Joey Via Senor. Um, next one, Andre Orlovsky versus uh, Antonio Silva. Um, Andre's last fight was 
obviously against Brett Rogers, and he got knocked out. Um, and, and that's the thing. Uh, I mean, when he when he lost to Fedor, well, even even Fedor. I mean, it, it was someone who was pushing forward. Um, Andre did something dumb and jumped in the air, and Fedor caught him. Um, but Tim Tim Sylvia, when he lost there, he was being aggressive. He was pushing forward. That's how he knocked out Andre Olaski. Brett Rogers obviously was pushing forward, and he was being the more aggressive fighter. Do I see Antonio Silva being that? No, I really don't. I don't see Antonio Silva pushing it forward, going forward, keep pushing. I really don't. Um, I th think Andre Olaski is going to, I think he still has it. I truly do. Um, uh, you can call me biased or not, but I'm a big Olaski fan. Um, and I think he's going to pick apart Antonio Silva. I think he's faster than Silva. I think he, hit, he hits harder than Silva. Um, obviously, he's not bigger. But I think he's faster. I think hits stronger. I think he's more well-rounded. Um, I think his ground game is very underrated. I think his jiu-jitsu is very underrated. Um, and I think, to be honest, I think Antonio Silva is a little overrated. Um, I, I, that's what I believe. And and I think Andre Olasi is going to win this. Um, I'm going to say expose Silva, but I think he is a little bit. So I'm going to go with Andre Olasi first round TKO over Antonio Silva. Yeah. I think I might... No, no, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about the first fight, Antonio Antoine Britt versus Rafael Caliente. That could go to a decision. I'm thinking about switching that. I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch this. Let's go all the way back to the first one. No, no, I'm going to keep it the same. Sorry. <laughs> um, main event, Alistair Overeem versus Brett Rogers. Uh, this one's a tough one. I, on my computer, what I keep looking at, um, I don't even have... I, I have nothing written. Um, so, I mean, here, I'll, I'll show you. See, right there. I have nothing written. So, uh, I mean, everything else I have written down and, you know, I, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, this one, I have no clue. I, I, I've thought about it and, and I, I actually don't know. So, um, Alistair Overeem, uh, so he's coming back uh, to the United States since he won the Strike Force Heavyweight title um, in that little four-man tournament that they did. Um I guess you could say, you know, I mean, he, he has kind of gotten a little bigger. Um, he hasn't said he's taking steroids, um, and, and we'll find out uh, when he does get his, you know, blood taken or UA. Um, but at the same time, I, I think Al Sorum in this fight is the more well-rounded fighter. Um, but to give something to Rogers, if Rogers does touch Overeem's chin, it, I think it's going to be over. Um, when I became a Fedor fan is when... Fedor took Rogers' shots, and he, I mean, he, he obviously he was hurt a little, but he took them, and that's when I became a Fedor fan. I was like, dang, that, that means he has a, he has a good chin. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, if Rogers touches you, it's over. And, you know, over, I mean, we, he's also had a suspect chin. Um, you know, I mean, it, he, he has been knocked out before, and, and I think truly think Rogers, you know, is going to test his chin. Um, even though I think Alistair Overeem might want to take this to the ground, we really haven't seen um, Overeem's jiu-jitsu defense. We saw a little bit against Fedor. Um, I, I think, like I said, I think Alistair's more well-rounded. I think he's better on the ground. Um, I, I'm going to say a little equal on the feet, but I might have to give a slight advantage to Alistair. His kickboxing is world-class. He trains with uh, Golden Glory over there in Holland. Um, but at the same time, I, something keeps bringing me back to Rogers, um, and I do see Rogers connecting to Overeem, and I, and I truly think. But Overeem is really, really ready for this fight. He's motivated. I, I think he's ready for it. Um, Overeem's definitely had tougher competition in his career. Uh, Brett Rogers, in his short career, he's fought some tough fights. Um, but I'm gonna, I want to go with Rogers. I, I don't know. I'm going to go with Brett Rogers, first round knockout. I think he's going to connect it. Um, Overeem's going to get stunned, and that's when Brett Rogers is just going to pounce on him um, and continue to pounce away and win the fight. So I'm going to go with Brett Rogers, first round TKO over Alistair Overeem to become the new Strike Force Heavyweight title champion. Um, but I won't be surprised if Alistair does win this. Like I said, it's a tough fight to predict. Um, but I'm going to go with Rogers. Um, so there you go. Um, yeah. So there's my predictions. Um, enjoy the fight. Not only tomorrow, UFC 113, but next Saturday, Strike Force on Showtime. Heavy artillery. So there is my predictions. Adios and good night.